Coffeezilla. I watched her three-part series called Investigating Logan Paul's Biggest Scam. And like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. While your work used to be impartial, your addiction to clicks has clouded your judgment and you've made very real errors with very real repercussions. Coffee, you took a shot at my reputation. Uh, so in this video today, I'm gonna be defending myself with facts, something that you have gotten in the habit of twisting as you continue to morph from an investigator to a gossip channel. You see, Coffeezilla tried to work with law enforcement in the past, but his work was described as not anchored to truth and often speculative. He is a lopsided journalist with an agenda, and he's nothing more than the keem star of crypto and finance. But as opposed to just telling you, I'm going to show you some of the core discrepancies that I caught in CoffeeZilla's investigation. Coffee, you interviewed the developer who stole the game code, fled to Switzerland, and held it hostage for a million dollars. Well, his name is Zach Kelling. Surely, as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies, one for aggravated robbery, armed robbery at a liquor store, and the other for, surprise, obstructing the legal process. I can see why you kept him anonymous. Who will be calling Z here? I guess among many things, it doesn't surprise me that he lied about having 30 engineers and a $50,000 a week burn rate. On my end, I have 30 engineers, I'm burning $50,000 which side note is how this delusionist landed on the million dollar code ransom, but it turns out he only had three engineers. Wouldn't someone with journalistic integrity know their credible source had not only an agenda, but a fondness for orange jumpsuits? Or did you just hear what you wanted to hear and moved on? Because even if you're lying to yourself, Steven, you still have to believe it. And I know what you're thinking. What type of idiot would work with an unsavory individual like Zach Kelling? I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process, who has turned out to be a professional con man that I have since learned fooled billionaires, the Mormon church, the owner of the New York Yankees, and now me. And surely you knew Emilio, the gentleman who supposedly let his child invest in a cryptocurrency, was allegedly responsible for two rug pulls before you interviewed him. So either you missed that or you knew it and failed to let the public know. Why? Because it was a clear sign that he was also untrustworthy. You seemed pretty excited when the guy told you that he couldn't hatch the eggs. Wait, you can't even hatch? No, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. You're kidding! You can't hatch? You're kidding. You can't hatch? You can't hatch? Uh, yeah, one second of research research would prove that to be false as you can definitely hatch eggs and even breed your animals. Click on that. Oh, we got a duck. And as you pointed out in your fine print, cross hatching was available on ETH at one point, but you perpetuated the opposite as truth with your chest out. Basically nothing worked. And by the way, guy, almost all NFTs are just pictures. No, it's just a picture. And surely a real internet detective would not break criminal and civil laws in trying to get information, right? So why have you allowed the illegal recording of Jeff's phone call without his permission. And then more like an internet criminal, post it online. And it was interesting, it was like, this is wild. Now, although you didn't verify any backgrounds, substantiate any evidence, took multiple criminals' words as truth, and broke laws, you still published the defamation. However, unlike you, the blockchain doesn't lie. So let's highlight some things that you did point out. Crypto King Jake stole $6 million. True or not, we had already removed him from the team when we realized he was a bad actor and his motives were purely financial. Con Man Eddie, lead developer, stole $1.7 million. True or not, when we learned he was a bad actor as well, he was immediately removed from the team. While myself and Jeff sold nothing and made nothing as verified through investigation and the blockchain. Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul. I repeat, Jeff and I made no money and will never make any money on CryptoZoo. In fact, we only lost money trying to pick up the pieces. As has been the case with dozens of crypto and NFT projects, the space is unfortunately ripe for bad actors to infiltrate projects that start with even the best intentions. Jake the Snake is no longer affiliated with CryptoZoo and we hope the money he reappropriated was worth ruining his reputation. Con man Eddie is being investigated by a higher authority that I cannot speak on. As you can imagine, I was not cleared from legal to discuss much of this including the legal process being undertaken and the criminal investigations going on during the fallout. But I do appreciate you calling out that rats under my nose stole the game code, millions of dollars, and left Jeff and I abandoned with no team and knives in our back. But even after 12 months of work, you've still managed to overlook one crucial piece of information. See, even though I've said it's coming so many times, you've assumed that CryptoZoo isn't being made. Who are you to decide when the development timeline ends? I got every 
everything stolen from me in our community, stopped promoting publicly as soon as I knew the extent of the internal issues, took all of the heat on social, and you still published a defamatory hit piece, fully knowing I was innocent, just so you could enrich yourself in your $10 million studio. Sharp, but deeply unethical, dangerously misleading, and illegal. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. And maybe we could have talked about this if you had reached out to me, personally, not my manager, Jeff, who is not me, me, Steven, but the first time you did was on Christmas Eve after you released your series so you could rely on false statements and unreliable people used recklessly. The subject line was third request for comment. Yeah, not quite. This will be my third time reaching out to you and your team. The first two times were through your manager, Jeff. The first two times were through your manager, Jeff. Okay, so the last time on Christmas Eve after the fact was to me, you have a funny way of twisting things. And I also noticed you left out that part on Twitter. Why hide that? Trust me, CryptoZoo is coming. I will make damn sure of it. And honestly, it sucks that after years of personal reform, going through trials and tribulations and busting my ass to evolve into a person that I can say I'm actually proud of, you led the charge to drive and monetize a narrative telling millions of people that I'm a fraud or I tried to scam my audience. That is patently false. This video is mainly for my fans and anyone who's on the fence that I hope I can help understand a situation that is tremendously complex but has been oversimplified for both views and clicks. And lastly, CoffeeZilla. I now know your motives with this. Clout and money, good for you, but also your, your slimiest So I'm not gonna come on any of your podcasts. If you wanna come on Impulsive and talk about this, that's fine. You've denied my invitation multiple times. You're still invited. It can be a one-on-one. Uh, if not, we're going to handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo, and I'll see you in court.